Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about the CPT Professional Edition by the American Medical Association Codebook. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, this is back to the basics week. Yesterday, I talked about the ICD-10-CM Expert for Physicians by Optum360. Today, I am talking about the CPT manual um, by the AMA. Now, this is the current version because we are in 2022. This is the current version. Um, and this is a book, regardless of whether you're taking an AHIMA exam or an AAPC exam, this is the book and the publisher that you need to have for your CPT book. This is the one by the AMA, and this is the professional edition. There are different versions of CPT. Optum has their own, um, and and they have uh, the procedural expert. The reason that the coding exams have this as their designated book is because there are addi there's additional information in the other CPT uh, books that perhaps when they're testing, they don't want you to have. But this book is very comprehensive. It is the one that I personally have always used, whether I'm taking an exam or even for work purposes, I still will only use the AMA version. Um, I am a firm believer in Optum products, as you all know. <laughs> uh, never an ad for Optum, but I love Optum. Um, but I'm a firm believer in them, I love them. But when it comes to CPT, this is where it's at. Okay, so again, we're going to talk about my lack of tabs. Uh, if you're just tuning in today, I did talk about tabs yesterday. It's unnecessary to tab your books, folks. And the reason that I say that it's unnecessary to tab your books is because, number one, tabs tear the books. I will always advocate for no tabbing of the books because when it comes down time for test time, especially if you're taking an AHIMA exam, the only tabs that you can use have had to have come with the original book. Yes, the AMA does have tabs for their books. I have done a demonstration uh, for tabbing of the book because I figure if you're going to tab it, you may as well tab it right. Uh, but I don't recommend having it because they do tear the pages. And if you are practicing, you're not going to need them and they will get in your way. It is all about speed, folks. You get two minutes roughly per question within the HEMA exam, the CCS, CCA, or CCSP. You get two minutes, 40 seconds with the um, AAPC, CPC exam. So just keep this in mind. I'm trying to make this as quick for you as possible. And I want you guys to know that this is why. Keep your book clean. This is a reference book. It is not a workbook. So it doesn't need you to add notes. It does not need you to highlight or circle anything in the book. Because if you're using the book appropriately, you're going to know how to read it. All right. So let's go ahead and dive on in. Um, and I'm going to show you around. See, here's the tabs. They've got plenty of tabs. I have taken them off already. These are the ones that were left over um, because these are the ones that are more specific to those areas. Now, if you are working in a clinic and you're not testing with this book and perhaps you want to tab it just to kind of get a quick reference to it, that's totally fine because that's not if, if the book is not something that you're always using, that's okay. You know what I mean? It's not going to make or break you on that. But it's just important to know that if you're studying or you're in that exam time, that these tabs will not help you. Okay. Um, they have... Right here in the beginning, the place of service codes. What I like is that um, the AMA really made good use of all of the space in this book. <laughs> uh, so they have the modifiers here. All right. Um, and then, of course, your tabs. The place of service codes. Uh, the place of service, the, the name, and then the description. So this is also a good reference for you to have. Okay. Again, they made very good use of all the pages. And as we flip on through, it gives you a table of contents. And then it talks about the add-on codes, the guidelines, the modifiers, what these things mean. This is a very good, it's a very good and very comprehensive introduction, right? Because it really tells you about like category one, category two, um, category one, two, and three, <laughs> what these things mean. I see a lot of people asking me, 
What does this mean? What does that mean? And a lot of it is right or here already. Unlisted procedure or service, you know, results, testing, interpretation, and special report, and that kind of thing. So this is a lot of really good information. I do recommend you guys reading it at least once. Um, here we have some, just some common prefixes, their meaning, and an example. Again, if you struggle with medical terminology, this is very good for you to have. It's in your book, and you can use the entire book <laughs> when you are in this test. So if you need to be reminded of something, you know, you can always refer to this, all right? Um, then they have the list of illustrations and whatnot. Um, so here we have evaluation and management tables and their criteria. A lot of people will ask me about evaluation and management. I don't understand it. It's the first thing that a lot of people say. The first thing that you got to do, read this. Guys, I'm not kidding. This is, even though it doesn't make sense, it's not going to make sense, but the more you spend time with it, the more it will start to make sense. But there's a lot of like impatience, I guess, in the beginning and people maybe not really realizing how much it involves. Medical coding involves a lot. And when do we apply evaluation and management? When do we apply a CPT code? That's going to reveal itself later on in your studies. But just very quickly, an evaluation and management is basically the cognitive work of the provider. They are not always going to have an evaluation and management depending on what's happening. If it is a minor procedure that's going on and that's the only thing, they won't get an e &M, All right, zero to 10 day global period um, on the procedure code and that's for another video. <laughs> But once you know what global period means, and once you figure out that not all procedures are going to constitute having an e &M, then it's going to make more sense. But you have to really understand why we have e &M. Again, it's for the cognitive work of the provider. If they're making a decision for a major surgery, yes, they will get an evaluation and management for that because that takes brain power. <laughs> it takes uh, know-how and it takes them deciding what the best path is for this patient. There, there may be a multitude of conditions that the patient has that makes a per certain procedures a little tricky to do. So they have to consider all of these things, you know, diabetes, obesity, um, obstructive sleep apnea, all of these things play a part in deciding um, on doing a surgery, you know. Uh, so that's the thing. These are the guidelines here. And so this is a very worthwhile read and it's actually very short. So even spending some time and really looking at it um, so that you can really understand, that's going to help you. Now, uh, there is going to be a change again <laughs> with e and and they that change will go into effect in January 2023. The updated guidelines is out already um so and that will be published in the new books that are going to come out in october uh so that's something for you to be aware of but fundamentally there's a lot of things that are still the same so this is worth reading uh here you have all of your evaluation and management codes the coding tips all right again another reason why i love this book because they give coding tips and it tells you how to think about these codes and when do these things apply and then you have all of your symbols down here and don't don't neglect these symbols guys because these symbols do actually mean something and they do use these see and so that's the thing you have to really kind of take the time to look at each section now if you're working on evaluation and management um, in your program i would recommend that this is the only place that you are looking in this book at that moment Okay, just the evaluation and management section. It's all in this section here, plus these guidelines here. It takes practice. It's not a cookie cutter thing. It is actually taking information and actually looking at it and making those decisions in order to get to the appropriate level. Knowing and understanding what these terms mean, like what is problem focused, what is straightforward medical decision making, what is complex and you know, what are, what are all these things? It's really going to help you guys. So that I recommend there. Anesthesia. So anesthesia guidelines is very short. People still write me and tell me they're very confused. It's these two pages, guys. And it's actually a lot simpler than you think. Sometimes we tend to overthink things. <laughs> 
And I think with medical coding, it's almost a hazard of the trade because we do tend to overthink and we do tend to make things a little bit harder than they need to be. Um, but again, if you're taking the time to really look at these things, it's really going to help you. And that's the part that a lot of people miss. You see how small it is? It's very small. So you should not struggle with anesthesia coding. Okay. Just my opinion anyway. Surgery guidelines. Again, short and sweet. Very simple. Wonderful, beautiful illustrations. We're starting out with the integumentary system. That's how it's pronounced, integumentary. And then we have our musculoskeletal system and all of the codes and everything in here. Now, I've heard about this circling business um, where they circle in all this area. That's unnecessary, guys. If you're looking at the parent code and then you look at the indention code, this is just an extension of this code. This is more specific. This one, this says bone graft with microvascular anastomosis fibula. This says bone graft with microvascular anastomosis iliac crest. Bone graft with microvascular anastomosis metatarsal. These are all those corresponding codes that go with specifically that code right there. Okay. So when you see that, that semicolon, you take that part off and that next code is that. And it's indented right there. There's no reason to circle and highlight and do all this mess because it's going to make the book look really busy and very crowded. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of notes written all over and it sort of takes over the integrity of the page. These books will be inspected. If you have excessive writing, they will not allow you to take your books into the exam room, namely if you are with a HEMA, okay? So make sure that you do not do excessive writing. Some writing is okay, like little, little notes. Again, I don't recommend writing at all. But if you have to have something in there, make it very short. Nothing from coding clinic, nothing from CPT assistant, because they will not allow you to use your books, okay? Um, so here's, you know, all of these codes for this. It's broken down into the different colors. Cardiovascular is next. And then you can see the, that it's the 33,000 series and wonderful illustrations all the way through. And then you have your digestive system and it goes through all of the, the nervous system, the auditory system, path and lab. Now these get a little bit more involved. <laughs> and as you learn more. And as you pay attention, um, it, these will start to make more sense to you, okay? Uh, here, they're talking about uh, elements of medical decision-making, okay? And then it breaks it down into these things here. Um, and those are the codes, 80505. And so it talks about that, you know, when you're looking at the uh, path and lab section, all right? And, it, and then, again, it gives you more definitions, we're all about reading, folks. We have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. That's no joke. Here, it tells you that the, the code, they're not always in order, right? So it's going to tell you the code is out of numerical sequence, and it'll tell you what section to go to. So if you're looking for this code here, this 81204, it says it's out of sequence that you're going to see range 81171 to 81176. So you jump over to that section and you'll find that code. Okay. So easy as pie, <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah, here we go with more. And then it gives you the description of what falls under that code. Um, so a lot of things to, to review. I, I recommend going over each section and like literally opening the book to that section, reviewing each and every single code that is in that section, just even just scanning it, okay, looking at it so you know everything that's there, uh, all the possible codes, because sometimes we can't think of what to look up. <laughs> and so if we already have an idea because we've reviewed the book, then it's going to make it a lot easier because sometimes the index isn't always as friendly, right? There's, there's a couple of ways you can find certain codes sometimes and it can get overwhelming if you're a student. So that's why I recommend taking the time to go through each chapter and just review and look what it has to offer. And then it's telling you like definitions and other coding tips. And I mean, 
it's it's just a matter of doing that and so that's just very helpful then we have the category two codes all right and it tells you all about category two and what that means and why they have them <laughs> and then um then we have category three if i can flip to it yeah here we go category three all right okay some more category three uh, and then we have our appendixes now you guys always hear me harp about these appendixes appendixes are so um, underrated and they're so overlooked <laughs> uh, but the appendixes will tell you more information about things this one in particular is appendix a modifiers and so it gives you the modifier and it tells you what it is and then it gives you a definition of what it is so that's why this is very important to review all right this is appendix a appendix b is your summary and of additions deletions and revisions so you remember in the icd 10 cm optin 360 book uh, that was in the front <laughs> the summary of the changes what's new for that year here in the cpt book is in the back okay so, you know, this will tell you that the language, the verbiage changed, okay, for that, for that code, for this code, and then it keeps going. It tells you all of those things. It'll put a line through what was updated, what was changed, you know, what was deleted, and that kind of thing. And again, it's using the, sim the symbols, I was going to say signals, <laughs> the symbols, and then the symbols are down here. If you ever get lost, the key is down here. All right, so Appendix C my other most favorite so appendix a and appendix c are my two most favorite appendixes in the cpt book why is appendix c like in cat my favorite these are the clinical examples of some of the e m levels now because e m updated and changed and um there are like the um what is it office outpatient for example um those 99202 to 99215 that is now, those are the office outpatient visits. Those are based on either medical decision making or time. There are still some codes that still require three, you know, for the initial. You have to have three elements. It has to meet the history. It has to meet um, the medical, the physical exam and the medical decision making. So it has those three components. You know, the, that code range before that 99202 to 215 um, doesn't have that anymore. It's based on uh, medical de decision making or um, time okay and so the ones that have the element where you have to get two out of three or three out of three which is like the history of physical exam and the medical decision making they gave some really good gave some really really good examples here so for the profi services it starts off right that's your 99221 profi in the book is referred to inpatient uh, hospital inpatient services all right so this is the initial one. So it gives you good examples here. This is a worthwhile read because it'll give you an idea of what each level constitutes when it says this is straightforward. This is low medical decision making. This is moderate. This is complex. You know what I mean? So it's really going to give you a good idea of what to expect from certain levels. All right. Um, so and then it goes on to the higher levels here. A lot of really good examples. That's why I love this part. And then it gives you the subsequent care, subsequent profi, um, more good examples, consultations, all right? Um, inpatient consultations. You got to watch those, those, those series of codes because not all insurances use those. Sometimes they use different ranges of codes. So make sure that you check with your insurance, all right, if there is a, con a consult going on. Emergency department, critical care, prolonged services. All right, so that's again prolonged service without direct patient contact, and then physician standby. All right, um, the summary of the add on, the CPT add on codes. So this means that these can never, ever, ever <laughs> be the first CPT code listed because these are add on codes. This is a whole list of them. So if you're not sure, Right. If you're not sure that you're putting them in the correct order, right? Uh, if you're not using an encoder, if you're just using like a cheat sheet, and they go, "Oh yeah, well, we only use these codes," and somebody may have accidentally put an add-on code as the code that you use, 
um, you got to make sure that it, it's not here because then if it is here, then you have to look and see um, what code goes before it. All right. Or if this is, you know, what is it? Because these are all add on codes. These have to go with something. OK. Um, summary of CPT codes exempt from modifier 51. OK. These here. And then that means it doesn't go with that. All right. <laughs> and then um, CPT codes exempt from modifier 63. And here you go. All right. G, H, I, J. There you go. All the different things. And it's all listed there. Appendix L for the vascular families. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. This is for my cardiovascular coders <laughs> that are in the clinic that are actually working it. All right. Uh, you will learn some of this stuff when you're in school. Don't let it overwhelm you. All right. This is something, again, later on when you get more specialized, this is going to be very helpful. Okay. Uh, but it's a good review to look at anyway. All right. At least that's just my opinion on it. And there we go. Beautiful, beautiful illustrations. I love their illustrations. So bright and colorful. <laughs> Uh, but it does help with anatomy. I'm just saying. Uh, Appendix M and N. Okay. Uh, summary of resequenced CPT codes and where to find them. Okay. Um, o. O is a big one. O is a big chapter here. All right. Okay, P, CPT codes that may be used for synchronous telemedicine services. And then Appendix Q, Appendix R, right, here we go. And then here's your index. All of the procedures and everything that you could ever want to look up in the CPT manual is all right here, okay? So they they list all of the, like, the main term, and here's all the subterms, like, you know, what what it could be referring to if you're going by that. Um, and it's just all the way through A to Z. So this is a good thing to review, even if you're just reviewing the index, to look at the terms so that you can get kind of familiar with the terms and what they fall under. Because even though you're not going to memorize everything, it's going to be familiar and you're going to be able to recall it versus somebody who does not do this and is lost in the sauce trying to find the code. If you've been reviewing the index, not necessarily having to look everything up in here in the tabular section, but if while you're studying, you're just reviewing the index, it's going to get you more familiar with those terms. It's going to be a lot more quicker to retain things. That's my advice anyway. <laughs> um, so it goes all the way through and then that's it. But they have one more surprise. Ta-da! Common abbreviations. <laughs> now, I didn't know that an audience member pointed that out to me, so I'm pointing it out to all of you. These are common abbreviations that are here, so if you get stuck, good place to look, all right? Note here, no notes, no notes, no notes. Practice, practice, practice with the book. Notes are not going to save you. Tabs and highlights and circles will not save you because that's not going to be the thing that you're going to be tested on. How many notes and how many circles and highlights you have, how fast you can look up book uh, codes in the book. That's what you're being tested on your proficiency in understanding and being able to comprehend what you're reading quickly and being able to decide on a code selection. That's what you're being tested on. Remember that because again, don't waste time with things that you don't need to do. Focus on practicing with the book, opening it up, looking at each and every single page so that way you can get familiar with the book. It's the people that are lost, that are confused, that are scared of the book, that have the most trouble. I'm just saying. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, I hope that you will like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you all next time. Bye.